Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. I am Dory and today we are back with some more mining with Dory. If it ain't love, why does it feel so good? Why does it feel so good? This week for mining with Dory, I don't really have anything to talk about. Um, I shared my ghost stories last week and I don't really have any more like spooky stories in all honesty. I guess I can share some more stories that aren't necessarily mine, that aren't ghosts, and are just kind of some other creepy things. So, one little story is that, well, it was about a mystical creature. Um, pretty sure all of these are pretty much mystical creatures, slash, I guess one of them's technically a ghost. I think I told this one already. I might have told it on my live stream last weekend. I don't remember, to be honest. But the first story is going to be about... Bigfoot, and he is a mystical creature, he or she, you know, whatever. Um, I know I told this one kind of on my live stream, not really. But yeah, so the first one is about Bigfoot, and I guess you could say I've had an encounter with Bigfoot, even though I myself do not believe that it was Bigfoot that we had an encounter with. But my mom and my brother insist that it probably was, so I'm taking their word for it when I talk about this. We were camping, I don't know how long ago, like a year, two years ago. It's been a while. So we were camping, or maybe even three or four years ago. I honestly don't remember. It's been a really long time since this happened. But we were camping, and in the middle of the night, randomly, everyone just kind of like, oh, I didn't wake up. Everyone else woke up. We were in a tent. Um, take it this way. We're not used to sleeping in tents. Because my uncle has a camper. We usually sleep with him in his camper, but that time, me and my brother insisted to my mom, hey, we need to sleep in a tent, because we don't really ever get to sleep in a tent, and we just wanted to not have to sleep in the camper for once. So my mom was like, okay, yeah, sure, let's sleep in the tent. So we all slept in the tent that night. Well, all of us, when I say all of us, I mean me, my mom, my brother, we all slept in the tent, and, well, yeah. So my mom and my brother swear up and down that it was Bigfoot and they just heard like this big thumping. Um, keep in mind also, we were kind of near cows. So I, in my brain, I'm thinking it was cows. That's what I say it was. My mom and my brother, not so much. But they heard this loud thumping. They heard some pretty um, scary noises in the middle of the night, which they chalked up to being Bigfoot. So yeah, that was... That's like kind of like a scary story, I guess, but not really because nothing like bad actually happened from it. I don't know. You guys can be the judge if that's like at all scary. Um, if it really was Bigfoot, that is kind of actually scary just because those things could really hurt you. Like you'd be dead if you run into one of those things and if they're real. I honestly, I don't, I want to say I don't believe in Bigfoot. But I ever so slightly have the thought, okay, maybe these things exist because so much of our world hasn't been discovered. Just kind of like with the Loch Ness Monster type thing. Maybe these things exist and maybe we just haven't encountered them yet for some reason, somehow, some miraculous way we haven't encountered them. Mm. But yeah, so there's the first one. The next one, I guess she's technically a ghost. Um, it's the story of La Llorona, and my dad is the one who had an experience with this. So, if you guys aren't, I guess, Mexican, and I'm pretty sure it's a Mexican story, or Hispanic, um, you probably don't know what La Llorona is. She is basically the ghost of a woman who, there's like a million and a half different versions of this, by the way. The version that I know the best is she drowned her kids in an arroyo, and basically... She regretted it so much. I think she committed suicide after, she, or she drowned as well. Like I said, there's a bunch of different versions, and she did this because she wanted to get back at her husband. Because her husband, I think, I believe, like in the version that I know, he slept with another woman and wanted to take the kids. And she said, "No, you, if I can't have the kids, no one can have the kids." Type of deal. So she took the kids, drowned them, and then she regretted it. Like, she, like, it was, like, a horrific thing, so she regretted it very much, and she started searching for them in their royal when she ended up drowning as well. In other versions, she commits suicide, and 
all kinds of different things. It's a pretty dark story. You guys probably get the gist of it. It's a pretty dark story. But it's a story that, like, if you're a Mexican kid, or if you're a Hispanic kid from around here, or you just live around, like, the area that I live around, you know this story. Um, the story is basically meant to say, just don't go near the arroyos. So, she, what she does is she wanders the arroyos. That's, like, her curse. She forever wanders them looking for her ki children. And if she sees children at night, or at any time of day, she just happens to be walking by, mostly at night, playing in an arroyo, she will take them and drown them. So, it's kind of like our folktale story to, like, keep kids away from arroyos. If you guys don't know what an arroyo is, um, it's, it's like the drainage area for water. That's what we call them out here as arroyos, because I don't think they're called the same thing in most of America. Um, but yeah, that's what they're called here. So, yeah, my dad had an experience with her. My dad, he's told this story a few times to me, and I believe my brothers. Basically, he was, um... One of his friends, because there's tons of arroyos out here, because um, once upon a time when our river actually had water, it used to always flood. That doesn't happen anymore because I said once upon a time when we used to have water. You you can imagine, we don't really have water that much anymore. But it used to always flood, so there's a lot of arroyos and everything. But him and his friends were, you know, having a sleepover, just kind of messing around. I think they were sleeping over at night. This is when my dad was like 10 or 11. And then they started hearing noises because his friend lived right next to an arroyo. So all of them, your kid, this is a story for kids to keep them away from being in dangerous areas. Their first instincts was, this is La Llorona, because they heard creepy noises coming from the arroyos. So, yeah, that's another kind of spooky story. The more likely thing, it was just probably like someone like in the arroyos for who knows what reason because i don't know why you'd want to be in there i mean people play in them all the time but i don't know why you'd want to just be in one crying because that's what la llorona does is she's just she's like in the arroyo and she's crying that's just kind of like what she does so yeah there's like my dad's spooky encounter the next one and the last one i think i'm gonna tell for this week because the video is getting a little bit long and these videos don't get edited down that much is gonna be the story of the skinwalker that my uncle ran into which if you guys don't know what a skinwalker is again i think it's more of a local um concept but skinwalkers i think i explained this one on my live stream actually skinwalkers are basically shape-shifting humans they will actually go and i think they skin their prey or something like that i don't remember how it goes exactly but they skin their prey and they can shape shift into whatever they want to be and a lot of times if you're a trucker this is like a really big story if you're a trucker because they have the tendency to jump on trucks and my uncle had that happen to him it freaked him out so that's his story of a skinwalker that skinwalker jumped on his truck also him and his girlfriend were watching a movie one night, and I teleported away because I wasn't about to die in lava. I am sorry, but cheat see, I know. Shh, who cares? I'm alive. I did not feel like losing all of this stuff. They were camping because they have a big camper. They're the ones with the big camper. And what happened was really scary and, like, creepy was that they were watching a Skinwalker movie, like, whatever and everything. And then when it ended, their camper started shaking, like, insanely shaking back and forth. So they thought it was their friend just, like, pulling a prank they and they pulled their guns because you know if you're camping usually you have a gun so they had guns with them and yeah that's like another scary story because it could have been a bear it could have been a sasquatch but their first instincts was a skinwalker so yeah there's like all the scary stories that i can really think of scary spooky halloween-esque stories but i hope you guys did all enjoy this mining with dory i kind of like teleported home at last second so i didn't want to die in lava hope you guys did all enjoy it and if you did don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see y'all next time on my channel. See ya. Bye!